Mali over 50,000 rand to invest in eight business. 11 young entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Business, business. Each entrepreneur will get an opportunity to pitch for this investment into their business. The judges will use their own discretion. We'll go through to our final episode where they will battle it out at a grand price. We're going to make you move in Jalongo, Somlugo, for half past one. Emin, for SABC one, Msanti, for sure. Well, well, well. It's the penultimate episode of Money in the Bank. And today, we mean business. We are going to get a business card, but we are going to get a business card. 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 We are going to As things stand, six entrepreneurs have made it to the stage. We are going to get a chance to get a business card. We are going to get a business card. We are going to get a business card. We are going to get a business card. We are business card. We are going to get a business card. We are going to get a business card. We are going to get a business card. We are going to and I'm here to bring you all the action as it happens. So, now that we know what today is all about, so we start so good to get spawn on my business way to Ice Tube. I finally let it glaze this car. Our top movers are Eight Kitchens, SK5 Logistics, Fushaka, Mikulian Waste Management, Debomat. And to complete the top six is the business with the longest name in the history of making moves Jones for Change General Trading and Supply. Here are the three judges to help us with the task today. Billy Selekai, certified professional speaker, highest designated speaker in Africa, entrepreneur and business coach. Trudy Makaya, CEO of Makaya Advisory, a firm that consults on macroeconomics and develops startup. Micha Muten, property specialist, managing shopping centers across South Africa, inspirational speaker, focusing on youth development. Sit back, as there will be lots of twists and turns before we get to that magic number four. All right, judges, welcome to Making Moves. Thanks for making time to come and assess these six businesses. So we'll start with Abieza Trading Enterprise. They're in the food business. Let's watch, find out what they're about, and deliberate about them. Hi, my name is Bulelani Tembe, a co-founder of Abieza Trading Enterprise. We are young entrepreneurs owning the business. The business started operating in 2014 in Tembisa Hospital, managing their cafeteria, where we are actually serving a variety of food to doctors, nurses, the patients, where we serve over 800 customers in a day. Number one, number two, hygiene is very, very important. Yeah. I understand. I'm not going to kiss you, I'm clean. I'm not going to kiss you, I'm not going to kiss you, I'm not going to kiss you. Actually, from the time it's gone, because the capital is being run, and we did not understand the businesses in Genagulu and the markets in Genagulu. So then, the Kalis Bangani, and then as the business grew, we saw the demand was in Ayoya Kula. So therefore, we needed Isan. So who's the boss between the two of you? Let's start there. The lady is. <laughs> if he says so. Eh? The lady is the boss, ne? Okay. So the first thing I noticed about your business is that you started with five thousand rand. Capital. True. Okay, so you guys are inside Tembisa Hospital. You've got a restaurant there. Do you have a business? Is it a business? Yes, it is a business. What if I argued that you are glorified restaurant managers 
that are employed by Tembisa Hospital. We gave birth to another business outside the hospital, you know, where we've got mobile kitchens, and then we, we've seen a need, you know. You guys have about four minutes to talk to us about your business, and that four minutes starts now. Um, we are Abieza Trading Enterprise, also known as 8 Kitchens. It's a brand that we just actually had a, a signature on. You know, we actually um, offer a variety of um, food to, uh, to, to LSMs, um, living, um, sorry guys, ah, shucks, sorry. Living standard measure. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay, continue. We believe that where we are actually situated as a business, there is a market for our business to actually to grow. All right, guys, so eight kitchens. We've seen the video. The tasks that we gave them at their last pitch was to get an ISO 9001 certificate, was to formulate a business plan, and was to get a lease for their restaurant. So what we're specifically looking at today is do we want to give them funding for their restaurant? Um, we are in the process of being ISO accredited. Um, we have spoken to um, a person who deals with accreditations, um, who is willing to assist us, so soon we will be having that certification. Um, as well as the business plan, you know. Um, it took a while to put it together, but it is coming together um, in terms of our direction going forward. Um, with the pub and grill that we want to convert into a restaurant, you know, trying to mobilize customers in the area, as well as people from outside, to let them know that when they come to Tembisa, there is a place where they can enjoy good food. The landlord, um, we have managed to sit down with him, uh, made a few adjustments to the contract in terms of repairs and repayment, things like that. So we've done quite a lot. I'm no longer working in the business, even though I do have challenges of working on it. We do have plus minus 40 customers who actually come in to buy from your breakfast, to your lunch, to your supper. You know, and I'm excited to say that when it comes to deliveries and orders coming in, we've, we've got a delivery car that we have branded and we do have an existing staff that we've actually converted into a driver to actually take orders for us. Trust me, winning this 50,000 will not only just change our lives, but it will create a lot of jobs. So this is the business plan. Billy, what do you, what do you think about um, these guys? Well, I think what's encouraging is they came with one thing going. You gave them feedback. They didn't procrastinate. They acted upon the feedback. And based on that, they are now growing their business. They took the feedback very, very seriously. well. Very seriously. It was, you know, I, I was shocked to see that they came back with all of those things um, as quickly as they did. Are they making money, though? Yeah, actually, that's what I, I'm looking at here. Uh, but they did about 88,000 rand of monthly income and 86,000 rand of monthly expenses. So their profit is 2,000 rand. Um, yeah, they don't have a lot of room to, to grow. They, they look like they're suffocating. Perhaps there's things they need to look at. For instance, your salaries. You don't have to have fixed salaries. Mm -hmm. They depend on schools, taxes, funeral palace. All those things don't happen, um, you know, continually. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a slight concern about the fact that I think they give away money, they, they've got a CSI kind of energy to them, and they do, I can, you know, they won't admit it, but there's a little bit of leakage here and there, because they're very, very uh, kind and giving people, and it's too soon for that. Yeah. They're not sustainable yet. Yeah, yeah. so we're looking at the lease, um, it's, it's, it's a fair lease, but I mean, there's nothing that stops um, either party from terminating. Uh, with just three months' notice. The thing about this type of business is you have loyalty mm. uh, that th drives your business. You have people who feel, I want this guy's food, that's what I'm going to go for. So if they can focus on the menu offering to make sure that they build the, the right uh, uh, sort of loyalty base. So as a standalone kitchen or venue within a pub, I'm lukewarm about their business, but as a business that has these three divisions that are interdependent, I like their business.
What I like about them is the fact that they're so teachable. So even if you give them the 50 grands, plus a lot of advice, they will still listen. And, and a lot of businesses always have this perception that they need money. But sometimes they just need proper structuring and proper repositioning, and the money becomes a cherry on top. Mm. I, think, I think they're onto something big. Oh, whatever I'd come, let me be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This guy's vision is, I want to one day own my own railway. Okay? All right, so we're going to take a look at SK5 Logistics. and They are in the transportation business. And uh, it's a very interesting business. I'm looking forward to the discussion that we're going to have about it. Many known as SK, the owner of SK5 Logistics, based in Middlebeck. I'm a taxi operator, the youngest taxi operator in Middlebeck. We do operations on certain countries. Our main cause of, core of the business, we are uh, transporting people in the mines, in the industries around, and the local taxi routes around here. He need to ask you and switch him camp. On ask you show him to be able to. He into the net. He X factor. Yago SK5 logistics. Him talk about Maroi Bonello. Yeah. Maroi Bonello. Since then. Now I come along a panzo so sanga nei. Yeah. Um kusu kusu ya makum. Eh eh. So firstly, I mean, I wanted to give my customers a comfort. What do you think you could do better as as an entrepreneur? If I could actually uh, invest more. In, in my marketing. I think my business would actually flourish more. If I were to get a 50,000 rent, I said in the beginning that I've already made satellite uh, offices in various towns. So with that 50,000 rent, I would actually use it for market, to market in the other towns so that it can actually secure me return trips in Mozambique and in the other uh, towns that I've got satellite offices in. So you want to spend 50,000 on flyers? Not only for us, I want to rebrand and make visibility of the offices that I have on or the satellite offices that I've got. Do a business plan for your entire business and then look at the different elements of it, the corporate business, the cross-border and the local taxis. And then secondly, get an accountant you know, a bookkeeper, someone who's going to help you to just keep track of the finances that come in and out of your business. We've developed a business plan for SK5. And I'm going to do that, I think it's, it's been recorded. And one of my, job, one of my uh, tasks was to actually appoint an accountant, appoint a letter for an accountant, uh, HEF. Every month or it's just every week. Every week. South Africa. Yeah. All right, so we've seen the video. Well, it's an interesting sector of the economy. I think very well established traditionally um, transporting people. But I think he brings something else um, to it. I think he's got um, a sense of wanting to develop new routes, new services. So um, I think, yeah, very forward looking and also a desire to formalize it and have structure to it, which I think is quite important um, in this industry. The business makes sense. Uh, and he understands his market phenomenally well. And where he wants to use the money makes absolute sense to me. I'm not sure how teachable he is. I think he's quite dead set in how he wants to do things, which, which is, you know, I think that's part of why he's successful in that space. He's very clear about what he wants. My opinion of it is that he's, he might be coming across as if he's not teachable, but it's just because he knows exactly what that business requires. 
but he also still needs the teaching, even though it's a very established taxi business. I mean, if you look at his financial statements, there's a lot of activity, so you can see it's a very robust business. Well, the question that I, I, when I look at this business, I'm asking myself this question, does it really need the money? This guy's vision is, I want to one day own my own railway, mm -hmm. right? I think there's something special there. Mm -hmm. And for me, you won't come for 50,000 rand unless you need it, unless you need that help to get you to the next level. Yeah. Right, let's park it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, at the end of this process, <laughs> we all get to vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when, you know, it will you determine whether, make, yes, yeah. I get to vote <laughs> as well. Okay. We'll meet you at the polls. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My name is Ria Mukhezi Chabalala, and I'm the chief entrepreneur of Foshaka in Zogutle. We manufacture low-cost, shared, high-quality products using composite materials. Our grave markers are eco-friendly, they're beautifully designed, they'll stand the test of time. What made you decide to open the Khusimula business here in Olinkoyo? Immediately I feel like I'm mechanical engineering. I actually had this ingenious idea. I had to the building blocks. Okay. Very like say composite material. Be anong ukar no kwa tle habo ma three four million ko di commercialize the blocks. So katwana na go na kana hapi. I came up with another ingenious idea. I was very the same manufacturing process, the same manufacturing technology. Get a highly consumed product. Modi black communities, mm. which are the tombstone. Yeah. Core business yamo hai ke e feng is interesting. Right. Core business yare na currently mm. kiri grave marker. Oh, okay. Liri pellet. Why are you not selling more of your product? Because if it's such a fantastic product, more people should be buying it, and your sales are weak. What's the turnaround strategy? Let's start there. All right, um, right now we've actually positioned ourselves in the center. We're planning on supplying um, which the, our biggest clients, uh, which is Abbab and Dabs. We're planning on supplying them provincially initially and then going uh, nationally. We manufacture low cost yet high quality grave markers using composite materials. Our grave markers are unique and as durable as granite. Yet an equally shaped and sized granite grave marker goes from anything between 1,200 and all the way to 2,000 Rand. Our product between 350 and 600. Yet we're able to achieve juicy, lucrative margins of about 300%. We all understand that it is very important for us to give our families a dignified funeral. Mm -hmm. So I'm not of the opinion that your sales force is needing to do that. You only need a sales force when you need to speak to masses of people. Mm. What you need to do is speak to key people within these underwriting divisions. Mm -hmm. So your underwriting managers, phone them up, set an appointment up with them and say to them, this is what I'd like to add into your benefit that you're offering these people. Mm -hmm. The final task for me is a business plan. I've seen 40 new parlors and only 12 have actually signed on with us and they're part of, and we're currently actually supplying them on a weekly. We also saw um, two underwriters and one stock fell. Right now they, we're still having talks with them. Um, hopefully they'll be able to sign on and become part of us or get supplied by us. Uh, in the next coming few weeks. We've been able to complete our tasks, uh, which is including business plan, uh, creating flyer, uh, pamphlets, and presentation and packages, um, and also uh, creating a new website. And then it's also gonna be live in the next few weeks or a few days. Yeah, Mokhe, it's Shabalala's business. What do you guys think? We, we have an in innovative guy here who is clearly an innovator for me as far as I'm concerned, all right? He plans to sell the business in the next three years. I'm yet to see a business that becomes profitable in three to four years in a way that is able to be sold. If you're an innovator, that does not necessarily make you an entrepreneur. You can, you can innovate products and find someone who can broker or sell your products. So my question is, what is it that we are backing here? Are we backing an innovation or are we backing a ongoing business uh, 
sort of product. Look, I think maybe he's found a thing, a material that can be applied in so many applications. I just worry that he's just not proving the business model properly and kind of focusing on one thing and getting that done. This guy is saying, if you come in on Monday, you say you have a funeral on Saturday, you tell me what you want, I can tailor make it for you. So he's a good designer. But he also wants to be a manufacturer. Who's going to manufacture this thing? And then he also wants to become a retailer. So who is he? Is he the innovator? Yeah. Is he the middle guy? Yeah. Or is he the retailer? Yeah. Because all of those businesses have different okay. dynamics. So he's an innovator and manufacturer. He studied mechanical engineering, so that's his skill. Yeah. The financial behavior here is actually quite um, worrying, yeah. according to his bank statements. Um, I don't think he's taking responsibility for anything. And this guy is what we call a creator. He creates a lot of things, but he never gets anything done and finish uh -huh. it and close it. Mm -hmm. You know, so he bounced around. And there is nothing wrong with that, actually. You just need to acknowledge it and say, this is who I am, and I will oh, leave this yeah, thing to someone absolutely. else. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But that's so, what I'm saying. Because he's a creator, he needs somebody who's called a mechanic. Yes. A mechanic is the person that says, you, you've got this idea, but how to turn it into a process from A up until you get money into the bank. Puts the and don't worry about anything, I will do it. But he needs an opportunity. He needs to break out. He does not have the longevity, he doesn't finish what he starts. Let's not again kill the guy who can, who cares what's going to happen in the next five years. So if next five years someone else comes and take him out of the business, at least in the last two years he would have made money. Okay, so you know, we'll see each other at the polls. <laughs> <laughs> let's vote. We hope there's no finding uh, against you. Yeah, let's, 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 we'll let's, meet at um, the polls. <laughs> Let's hold it and park it and uh, we each have an opportunity to give our vote and make a decision as to whether we want to back this guy or not. I just have to find out exactly. Her business is not making money and that concerns me. Okay, on to Mikaling Waste Management. Let's take a look and then discuss them. I'm Caroline Homo, founder and owner of Mikaling Waste Management, which is a company based in Fixburg in the Eastern Free State. Mikaling Waste Management is a company that offers services in waste management. Our core services include transportation of waste, waste collection, and waste minimization. Our uniqueness is that we clean the environment while making money. When you started the business, no, na le five thousand. Kikadi le kisna le to kisna mugi sebelezan ten kisna di assets kisna di koloi. So five thousand ya ten kile ka inka kabua le mutwa na na le koloi. Karuhi na kare. E kikupong hirisese koloi ya hao kapovene ya hao. Men koloi ni na hao hong hirisese ona na ka kwe di kilo five four thousand. What are the challenges that you're facing in the business right now? The challenges that we normally face is when the waste pickers have picked up a lot of waste and we do not have cash to pay them because the business requires one to have, to always and constantly have a lot of money up front because when they come in, they expect you to pay them up front. In 2011, South Africa generated 108 million ton of waste. 98 million ton of dead waste generated was landfilled. The return on investment if the 50,000 is awarded to us would be as follows. We will be using 49,950 on the cost of sales, which will generate 88,600, and the cross profit on that will be 38,650. What we'd like to see in your business is better operational processes. You need to look at projections and you need to plan how you're going to expand your business to get there. And then the last part of this is the cash flow plan. You need a cash flow plan. We started working out on the operational plan uh, on site. We weigh the waste and then after weighing it, we have uh, put this section or set this section aside just for the weighing of the waste. And then after that, we have also worked out another session, the side that's called the sorting area, where after weighing the waste, all the waste gets taken to that side where it gets sorted. And then 
from the sorting area, we go to the failing area. That is our third station. Now after the failing area, we go to the fourth station, which is our packaging area. You know, it's fairly simple business. It speaks for itself. What are your thoughts? So I think she's identified a very good niche. She saw the problem, secured some land, talked to the municipality, built relationships with um, waste collectors. So it's, you know, it's a very smooth evolution and you can see where she's going. So for me personally, I can see growth beyond the immediate needs that she has. But I do know that she has contained her immediate needs um, very specifically. So she knows exactly where she's going. But I think she needs to appreciate the fact that there's a growth opportunity. Right now, where she's playing, it's going to be very flat if she remains there. Yeah. If she wants to see growth, she needs to do like, you know, serious things in terms of, like you said, uh, recycling plants, uh, because she can actually cut out for everyone to go into the Johannesburg uh, recycling plants. They, she can be the hub of, of that area in the fix, fi, fix back. Her business is not making money, and that concerns me. Great entrepreneurs don't get into business for the sake of profit. They see a need in society, they Absolutely. fulfill that need, and then profit becomes the consequence of fulfilling that need. I think she's onto something here. The harvest time will come. She's set up the sustainable business and she knows where she's going. She understands where she's going. So she knows that a time for harvest will come. She wants 50,000 rand to put into the cost of sales. Already that will unlock profit, right? Mm -hmm. Because right now she's taking around 45,000 rand to cost to pay the guys who deliver the mm -hmm. rubbish on site. So already she's getting a bit of money into the income statement. She has another 12,000 rand from mm -hmm. rental. So it's a matter of time that she has a bit of a, fine, a cash flow relief. Exactly. And then she will turn the corner. You have a solid foundation of a business here. Yeah. This is the kind of woman that understands the four seasons of life. Yeah. You know, summer autumn, spring, and winter. So she's sowing now. When harvesting time comes, you'll be surprised. All right, fantastic discussion, guys. Let us take a look at the next business, Jones for Change. My name is Jones Maleka, the founder of Jones for Change General. We have two stores, restaurant, supermarket, and bookstore. Bookstore, we sell academic stores. And then the unique thing about our business is that uh, the students who are using bazaaris and NSFAS, they can come and swipe in our stores. And then credit cards from banks are also accepted. Cash as well is accepted. We could play my students fella. So the custom chaga and then it's all my students this side because in your area. And then since come campus only if you container supermarket slash restaurant. restaurant because my student every day. How much do you really need to record stock or sadi book? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand and worth of book stock. textbook and some of them like drunk expensive. Jones for Change General has a restaurant, bookstore, and then, uh, I mean, it also sells grocery. Like, we have uh, two permanent contracts with Edelon to cater students who are sponsored by NSFAS and private bazaaris. We also sell to general public. And then our vision is to be a leading food outlet and bookstore at the universities and colleges around South Africa. You need a structured business plan. Okay. You need to understand what business you're in. Find somebody that can hold your hand to do that because that's going to be your working document. And then Lucas wants you to go and talk to Pick and Pick around support for your spaza shop, essentially. Uh, foundation for enterprise development. And then if funding, so more online because responsible for the very shopping, so we're responsible for which funding. Having a good business plan is about having a multifaceted structure that is perfected in every area and dimension of business. Already business plan, we have a mentor 
and then the salary is going on. So, when you go to our environment, we have a business plan here, and then we get to follow up with our funding. Kadang-kadang bank file tas yang mula orang ke, kita cakap kontena orang na, like, kita bawa kaya di trailer. So kita cakap someone and then kita cakap orang na kontena, orang trailer ni ni nak kita buka. Alright guys, we've just seen Jones for change. What are your thoughts on the business, Micha? He's playing in a number of fields, but I think he has an opportunity of convenience. I don't know whether it's all that unique. Um, his one thing that he's got is that students are able to buy from him on credit using their NASFAS or EduLoan cards. He's got a big problem with stock because students come in wanting certain books and he doesn't have them. And that's, that's a big issue for him. He wants money to be able to buy stock in terms of groceries and books. Yeah, you know, when it comes to books, how sustainable is it? We've got iPads, iPods, things are being digitized. You know, how long will this textbook be physical? Not for a long time. I'm not convinced about that, yeah. yeah. I'm not differ. convinced, yeah. These students, these, they, they, they're buying and selling books all the time. So all he's doing, you don't necessarily have the cash, but you have your EduLoan card, or, and you're able to purchase a second-hand book through him. So you're getting it at a discounted rate. What I'm saying is, Jones for change is going to be changed very quickly. Yeah, but I don't believe where he's playing there's going to be that rapid change. Let me tell you, <laughs> if we're too far away, it's five years. But then he's got five years to make money, yeah, really. It's not a business but that's going to go in five years. But, but it and, is and something that guys, he can the raise. Other it, thing is, you know, the other thing for. is, that's not all he wants to use the money for. He's got another component to the business, groceries. which is groceries. And students are always going to need to eat. I'm also concerned about his growth strategy. I mean, what is he going to be? Just the, uh, the local grocer for a university, and that's it. Uh, maybe people will do their daily shopping, but they wouldn't do their big monthly shop um, at, his, at, at his store. Then what next? What's, what's the big um, thing that he's doing? Is he going to replicate the small grocer across campuses? But that's exactly one of the In things that we sent him on control. task for. Remember, Pick and Pay is moving towards the local strategy now. So in the communities, you'll see Pick and Pay local stores coming up. And what one of the tasks were to say, go to them, see if under their enterprise development initiatives, they could include you to do these locals at these universities. And if you look at his financials also, it sounds like someone who's really struggling. Yeah. Let's look at Double Mat and um, find out a little bit more about that business. There's a the wheel alignment there. Okay. There's a the wheel balancing. Okay. There's a the tire change. Mm-hmm. And happy, happy, the service is limo, the minor engine service is kaho, or na get sore speedo, kaho, or so. Okay. The busy kibu sets a speedo, kaho, or gam. What is it going to take to fix this business? I was a closed workshop. I was able to get a chance to grow a business. In such a way, I was able to get a the services they long already offer. Uh, with the 50,000 rents, what I would do with it, I would simply have a, a, a double garage sized workshop because so far what we need in our business is a closed workshop. Go to the CETA, go and do research, find out how you can benefit from the CETAs. The second thing is your banking. Go and see your bank. You need to manage your bank charges, see if they can't help you with your accounting system, and then as part of your banking, it's one task, go and apply and get a point of sale. And then the third task is, please go and do everything you can in terms of the brand. I'm doing my first task, 
business advisor se popokaba o tlo mpotsa gore ba bere ka byang and then ba ka sister business se bya we are a development agency that to serve small businesses whether be to take a concept or more or really business what happens with um government ke gore re motho se ka one rent assessment that is inside and to motho se ka marketing plan one to the promotion saga in marketing that includes website the business card and the signage and all and all that we got to financial management system that could help in terms of managing these finances now these are the support the three things that are important for the for business and I to get to, to grow this business i just completed my second task my which was to go to the bank to do the following instant accounting internet banking and also to get a speed point for the business i just done that uh, but then at the moment i'm still waiting for the bank to approve the speed point they are busy with the application which is to be processed during the week and then for now at least i've achieved to get the instant accounting thing working and also i managed to register the online banking I just went to Mesita to do my research on Mesita. So in terms of accreditation, they told us that uh, we need to have a structured workshop with all equipments in it and all the signages and the yellow lines. And that can only be helpful to us in terms of workshop approval. All right, so that's Double Mart. I think it's a good business. I think it's a very powerful concept because there are a lot of cars in the township that don't have the insurance or the warranty. And these are cash businesses. They want a quick rebalancing. You know, they need oil service and stuff like that. And I think for the fact that, again, she's a lady in an environment where there are not so many ladies doing this, I think that's a powerful plus for her. And I think what Why? you want... Yeah? Why? I'm not being any, any stereotype or anything, but quite honestly, guys would like to take the car to where the woman runs the show. It's just a subconscious thing. It's just a, a... Because we do things better than men, is that what we say? I think say? you're onto something. I think women also might feel more comfortable um, dealing with a woman yes. who can like, and not yes. feel like they do. Because she'll be able to talk to you and make it comfortable because yeah. if you go to a guy, he's going to tell you, Caparita's doing this kind of things, he knows you know nothing. And they take you to the cleaners. See, I, I get that. I agree with you. <laughs> her, her biggest challenge is that her space, she doesn't have all the infrastructure that she needs. Um, what I was very impressed with her about is that she came in with very little knowledge of the likes of Cedar, uh, uh, um, Mercita, but she's, she went and she's... Yeah. So whatever happens with her, she's already started interventions in her business that are going to help her business. I mean, everything that you said she must go and do, she made sure that she does even a bit more than that. Yeah. You say, go do a business plan. She goes and finds this mentor and they put a business plan yeah. of this nature this is a hell, this is good business. This yeah. is a very good business. I'm very glad that she came onto the show. I think she had lost perspective. She was stuck in her business. So simple things like she didn't have a point of sale machine. Yes. So she could only do yeah. cash transactions. Yeah. And, and the think, need, I think, for her 50,000 is very clear. You know, yes. It would really yes. take her business from Absolutely. one place to another. You know, she'd have better services, she can right. service cars overnight. It just makes sense. So I think even that, it's very well thought out. There's no question that the money would be, you know, there'll be a return on that investment. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll vote on this one a bit later on. We have looked at our six businesses and um, we're looking for four. The way forward now is for us to each pick our top four and then see which are the common businesses in each of our top fours and then take it from there. Yeah, All right? Okay. Cool. Mm. Guys, everybody's had some time to pick their top four. It's time for us to fill their envelopes and the production team will then deliver and let each of the entrepreneurs know if they're coming back or if their Making Moves journey ends here.
Thank you. There we go, guys. Put him in this. All right, judges, thank you very much. You guys have been an awesome panel. There's been lots of learning. We'll see which of these four are going to walk away with that 50,000. Yes. You know, everybody wants to be a winner, you know, so <laughs> being part of the top four, you know, it, 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 you know, it means I'm a winner. I'm so nervous. <laughs> The top four has been decided. Now it's time to deliver the news to the entrepreneurs. We start in Tembisa with eight kitchens. I'm nervous, but then at the same time, I'm also excited, regardless of what I'm actually gonna receive. Remember, the top four will have a chance to pitch for an investment of 50,000 Rand in the next episode. From Tembisa, we went to Pretoria to deliver news to Fusha. Thank you. Nervous, excited, anxious. But yeah, I'm ready, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready. Now the road leads us to SK5 Logistics in Middleburg. Will he make the top four? Whatever I'd come, let me be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's time to head to Fixburg to meet Caroline from Mikuleng Waste Management. Oh, Caroline looks rather very relaxed. Could it be that she's in the top four? The whole journey. So whether I make it to top four or not, has in Tweka Lokalo, although in it Laban Twent or Gifi said top four, but hey, get a better achievement or ever get really from man till Mona Mogite. Our next location is Winterfeld to Devomat Wheel Balancing. Can I mix the motions? I get over I just have to find out or exactly. Our last location is Teflop in Limpopo. To deliver the news to Jones for change. I guess we were like a top four of a fellow Mona, so he wanted to result like a Rona Dere. I'm expecting to actually go through to the finals, and yeah, that's the only thing that I can only expect. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was expecting this, but at the same time, I wasn't too sure, you know. Um, but wow, God is awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> I had a lot of butterflies. I didn't know 
by then now. Well, I'm glad that I made it this far. During the pitch, like I'm going long for making pitch like a one. So the judge like give me one first key. It's up for, but like about how so far I'm going long for the pitch like a one. I got it right. 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 Naori envelope ina intwaredzi di daba te te monad. This is what the envelope says. All right. There is only one spot left in the top four. Who amongst these two entrepreneurs is going to take it? Ooh, our move ends here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel, you know, <laughs> disappointed, you know, but it's fine, it's fine. Here's our top four Zans. Eight Kitchens, SK5 Logistics, Double Mud, and Mipileng Waste Management. Hi, I'm Bulelani Dembe. Cashmon making moves while I compete for the grand prize of 50,000 with other three businesses. 